Yeah, I cut my prices. From what to what? From four dollars to two fifty. Okay, why is that? Uh, the St. Patrick's Day sale. At the Old Timers Restaurant, which is the most popular gathering spot in town, the presidential visit got rave reviews. He put himself as a common person. I think he did a very good job. I thought he was A+. Plus. I don't know why he came to Clinton, but I'm glad that he did. The people responded to the president as the president is trying to respond to the people's wishes. So with Jimmy Carter gone, the townspeople here, well over half of them Irish, got down to the serious business of celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Gary Shepard, CBS News, Clinton, Massachusetts. The House Government Operations Committee today overwhelmingly approved legislation to give President Carter power to streamline the bureaucracy. Chairman Jack Brooks, who had wanted Congress to retain more control over the reorganization, called it, quote, the best unconstitutional bill that can be drawn up. The bill is slightly different than one passed by the Senate. The water-starved West Coast is getting some relief from the drought. Rain and snow fell in parts of Washington and Oregon today after heavy rain and snowfall last night. In Southern California, there was an unwelcome accompaniment to the rain. Terry Drinkwater reports. For most of parched California, the clouds brought rain. But the storm last night turned into a freak tornado in the Orange County suburb of Fullerton. Factories smashed by the winds, the funnel lifting off roofs. Police said cars were picked up 20 feet into the air and then flung to the ground again. Tornadoes are virtually unheard of in this state. Damage was spotty in a path from the coast 30 miles inland. Concrete block walls knocked down, trees uprooted. Power and telephone lines knocked out. In some places, service still not restored. At the Worth's house, a wooden beam as if stabbed through the roof by the wind. All of a sudden, there was this terrible noise that was like a train, yet I knew it wasn't. I knew it was the storm, and it was real high-pitched, and it was just all through the whole house. I could just this high uh, roaring like a train but yet much more powerful and, and I knew that it was it was the storm but I, I didn't understand what kind of storm we had you know because I had never been in something like that. To the north the storm was more gentle only minor flooding and some badly needed runoff flowing into California's critically low reservoirs. The front has now passed through the state but there was not enough precipitation to even begin to end the drought. In the San Joaquin Valley, cattlemen are still selling off their herds. There won't be enough grain and pasture land to support them. In the Pacific Northwest, this latest series of storm fronts has increased the snowpack, yet the runoff won't be sufficient to ease this summer's hydroelectric power shortage. But it was enough to fill up some of the rivers and streams so fish could be netted again. The first good news for sportsmen and the Oregon-Washington fishing industry this year. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Fullerton, California. Three major airlines have been flying coast to coast with only about half their seats filled. So today, in a bid to fill the other half, they began offering big discount fares on some transcontinental travel. But the airlines cautioned hopeful travelers that this was not the beginning of generally lower fares. They told us that because of rising operating costs, passengers likely will be paying more, not less, for tickets on flights between most cities. Moonies, they're called, the followers of the controversial Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Five Moonies and their parents have been in a San Francisco courtroom since last week, exchanging charges of brainwashing and kidnapping. Harold Dow reports. With rallies like this one, Reverend Sun Moon's Unification Church has been very successful in recruiting new members for his movement. Many of those who follow his religious teachings are young people. Once they join, they perform as cheerleaders, fundraisers, and spiritual disciples, espousing the religious ideals of Reverend Moon and his church wherever they go. But some parents have become so worried about their children that they have resorted to illegal kidnappings and deprogrammings to get them away from what they feel is Moon's brainwashing. Many of the children involved are over 21, and in a San Francisco courtroom, a hearing is underway to determine whether parents can control what their children do, even though they are adults. Five families from around the country have come here petitioning the court for permission to legally deprogram their offspring, who have become followers of Reverend Moon. I feel that's a total violation of who I am, or any kind of trust or mutual sharing at all. And I, it, it really sickened me, it hurt me very much, because I had more faith in them. I had more faith in their faith in me. 
We don't really want to win control of her affairs. We want to give her an opportunity, free of influence from the movement, to make this very critical decision in her life. Superior Court Judge S. Lee Barbaras is presiding over the hearing. On one side, attorneys for the parents claim that the children have been subject to mind control and brainwashing. The attorneys want the court to grant the parents guardianship for 30 days for deprogramming. On the other side, attorneys for the Unification Church claim the children merely exercise their constitutional right of freedom of religion, and to grant the parents' request would be exactly what the church has been accused of, brainwashing. I feel the allegations are unfounded. I really don't feel that I would have been subjected to course of persuasion or brainwashing. I think it's ridiculous. And if he decides to go back with the Unification he, Church? Uh, we have told him we would not restrict him from doing that. We want him for 30 days to see if he really has free control over his mind, his thought, and his actions. The decision facing Judge Bavaris goes far beyond this courtroom. He must decide whether to grant the parents guardianship or uphold their children's constitutional rights. And his decision may determine the legality of efforts by parents around the country to wrest control of their offspring from Reverend Moon. The decision is expected next week. Harold Dow, CBS News, San Francisco. In 1974, former United Mine Workers leader W.A. Tony Boyle was convicted for, murder, for ordering the murder of Union rival Joseph Yablonski. Last year, he began his life sentence. Today, with his daughter at his side, Boyle left the Pittsburgh prison where he spent most of his time in the hospital ward. Now 75, he is awaiting retrial. Wendy Yoshimura was sentenced this evening to one to 15 years in jail following her conviction of possessing illegal weapons and explosives. Yoshimura was captured a year and a half ago when police raided the apartment she shared in San Francisco with Patricia Hurst. 26 workmen were injured, 22 of them seriously burned, when three explosions and a fire ripped through part of a Texaco refinery in Port Arthur, Texas today. The Irish and their friends are celebrating St. Patrick's Day today. Chicago's annual parade was dedicated to the memory of the Irish mayor who had led the march for 21 years, Richard J. Daley, who died last December.